but I've got with me a dream team today. I've got people with me that are going to actually help you move away from trying to be everything to everyone. You've heard me say the pilot doesn't serve drinks on the plane. The uh, medical specialist uh, doesn't do the admissions. A nurse does it. And I have to say to you, in real estate, one of the reasons why I think it's got such a high turnover rate and also why most real estate agents won't ever achieve the potential that they can achieve is that instead of just spending their time talking to current vendors and potential vendors or current buyers, they end up getting caught up doing a heap of other stuff. This is probably going to be music to your ear when I tell you that over the next half hour, we're going to show you a plan that's going to allow you to get rid of certain activities that take a lot of the time in your day, including the administration, including marketing, including sending out digital price updates, including sending out you know, uh, digital pre-listing kits or any pre-listing kit, diary management, email, buyer inquiry, the list goes on. It just doesn't stop. And I know that you keep hearing people saying, pick up the phone, have more conversations, but you also have this constant fight in your head. How am I going to do my prospecting when I've got to do vendor management, vendor reports? I've got to be out there putting the deals together. I've got to be managing my team. I've got to be going to my final inspections before settlement. I've got to be going to valuations. I've got to be going to you know pest and building. It doesn't stop. It's the highest paid hard work. It's the lowest paid easy work. And we're about to make life a lot easier. Today, I've got with me the great Alex Jordan, many would say the number one real estate agent in Australia. Um, and I can tell you the real deal. Um, in addition to that, we have Nick Georges, one of the founders of Wingman and one of the executives there that works with Jonathan. Um, many of you know him from his days as being one of the thought leaders of PM in Australia. Peter Kakos, of course, from Atlas, um, been in real estate. I remember Peter's probably three decades or close to it, all the way from Melbourne, now one of the senior people in the Atlas Group working out of the uh, Northern Rivers. And we have with us two remote professionals, which I'm going to ask Nick Georges in a moment to introduce. But if I can get remote professional number two, don't be shy. If you do have a camera that's working, if you just turn it on, that's it. Beautiful. Look at that. He's got the Australian emblem there on the uh, uh, right-hand side. Uh, so, Nick, firstly, gentlemen, welcome all. It's good to see you all. Um, Nick, can I get you to introduce formally our two remote professionals? Thanks, Tom, and thanks for that intro. Uh, welcome, Alex uh, and Peter. Uh, we have two of our remote professionals here today. Uh, Benj, who works directly with the Alex Jordan team, uh, and Ray, who works with Peter Kakos and the Atlas team uh, in the lower North Shore of Sydney. I uh, thought it'd be a great opportunity for all of your viewers, Tom, to actually see and hear and feel the quality of the, of the team that we've got in the Philippines. So I might just hand it over to you, Benj, to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the Alex Jordan team. Ben, you can't hear you. You're on mute. Um, no, they're not muted. They should be able to hear us. Uh, I think, you know what might be easy for you, Ben? Uh, if, if you're not getting access coming through, maybe maybe take your ear. I don't know. We can't hear you, but maybe take your headphone off and maybe go direct to the computer. I'm not quite sure. But while that's happening... Do you want to introduce the second person yeah. while we get uh, Benj getting his mic working? Ray? Can, Ray can works you with... Yeah, there you go, Benj. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm, at, I'm actually new to this Zoom up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just Tell getting us behind you. All right. So, hey, guys. Um, my name is Benj, and I am working with Alex Jordan from McGrath Paddington. So, my role is sales support. And um, a little bit about myself, it's just on my spare time, especially on the weekends, um, I like to spend time with my family. <laughs> yeah. Um, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? Uh, yes, I am actually 27 years old and I have a wife and a son. 
Yes. <laughs> Benj, Benj, let me ask you. Um, All right. Tell us a bit about what you do day to day for Alex. All right. So actually, my focus is on the marketing side and supporting the agents. So the main tool that I use our agent box and on it is campaign track. So um, what I mainly do is um, I do the listing kits and um, it includes the RP data summary, the suburb flyover reports, and then the form six, and also um, creating marketing codes, um, proofing signboards and brochures and um, downloading and uploading photos and videos for the properties, and also um, data mining and assisting the agents on their specialty suburbs. Awesome, awesome. And tell me one more question. What have you learned by working with Alex and working with such a high perform performing team? All right. So um, one of the things that I've learned is that the Australian real estate industry is really fast paced. So the agents are really busy. So um, time management is really important. So understanding what is urgent and what can wait is um, certainly a big thing. And also um, doing daily check-ins and end of the reports to keep that team up to date. And also one of the things is that um, not being afraid to ask questions. So those are the things that I've learned so far. <laughs> yeah. Love Alex, it. Alex, can I ask you, um, how long has Benj been uh, working with you? Uh, we're at the beginning of, I guess, our, our working relationship. It's been a couple of months, about three months approximately. Pleasure to have him on board. And I've had experiences with remote professionals previously, so this is not my first attempt at it. But the experience was very different to what we have now with Benj and, and Wingman. And I think that's a reflection of these guys being trained for the industry. They know real estate. They understand the process. I think there's a strong bond between Wingman as a company and their staff. There's a strong connection. It's not just a work relationship. I think it goes a little bit beyond that. Um, we've had a great experience today, very different to our previous experiences with remote professionals, which was, to be frank, disappointing. Um, Bench has taken off a lot of pressure from the agents. And this is an industry where you can get distracted very quickly and very easily. It's, it's the efficiency of the agent's role on a day-to-day -day basis. I would say majority of agents that I witness are probably doing 20% of proper dollar productive work a day and they spend the rest of the time bogged down in either paperwork doing marketing quotes letterbox drops you know all sorts of things that whilst you have to have those elements in your business they're not going to really get you the deals so the intent of getting someone like wingman and bench for us has been to take the pressure off the agents and bench now supplies us with a lot of um, important information that we weren't doing ourselves. So, for example, if we get a new listing and he he'll, will send it to Benj, Benj will then send us contact details for everyone surrounding that listing. So we'll have a bunch of 50, 100 numbers, addresses and names. The agents then get on the phone, invite those neighbours to the open inspection. So we start to build relationships with them. Um, at the moment, his role is very marketing focused, but also data mining. Uh, but it's taken off pressure, not just from us as agents, but also our admin person, Kaya, who's very busy. So it just creates a lot more efficiency and the experience has been much better than ever before. Lovely people to deal with, efficient, responsive, reliable, positive in their energy. And I would say outrank local, local staff members. So I don't think we could have the same experience with someone from, from Australia. Well, I can see, Alex, I can see why that happens because for the investment, um, of getting um, a, a person that seems on camera, very responsible, a family guy, um, I know highly educated, they're getting paid a fraction of a salary that we have people locally. But to me, it's not even the money, Alex. I think at the moment, because we have a low unemployment rate in Australia, or actually uh, in many parts of the world, but in Australia... People can go get jobs anywhere. And what we've slowly seen is the young person that used to sort of come into real estate is actually not seeing it as a, a, as a privilege, as an, they see it as an entitlement, um, having a role. And when things don't go their way, you just hear them, oh, mate, I'm moving on, I'm going on. He wasn't, he wasn't nice to me. Nick, you've told me in the past 
the remote professionals, you know them intimately uh, because it's your business. They are so appreciative of the opportunity to be able to have a full-time role and serve people in the real estate industry in Australia. They're grateful and a grateful, happy employee becomes a successful employee. Absolutely. I think it's one of the most important factors of, of us as a business is not only providing amazing staff, but also uh, providing guidance to the Australian businesses that work with us on, on how to integrate remote professionals into their business. Uh, and like any employee across the world, uh, if employees feel valued, um, they will put in 110%. They will want to um, they will want to do an amazing job for for their employee, and they want to make a difference in the business. They're not they're not there in the background just doing administration tasks. They are part of your business, part of your growth, uh, and ultimately part of your success. May I ask you? And we're going to come back to uh, Benj and Alex uh, in a moment, uh, but uh, I'd like to talk to our second remote professional. If you'd like to introduce him, and let's get to know him as well. Yeah. Um, Ray, I'll ask you the same question. Tell us a bit about yourself and uh, and how you're working with Peter and, and the Atlas team in the Long North Shore. Um, hello, good morning, guys. Uh, my name is Ken. I'm working with Michael Coombs from Atlas in Neutral Bay, New South Wales. So my role is uh, sales support. So in my uh, spare time, I love playing volleyball. I have a group of friends and playing during weekends. Also visit my mom and siblings for a bonding time. But, but so for yeah. Family, Nick, you know what I noticed Sorry. about people, uh, Filipinos, families are very high value for them, isn't it? And I know that from Filipinos I know in Australia. Yeah, it's it's super important. And this is one of the one of the reasons why our model is a work from home model. Uh, it allows the team in the Philippines to actually spend more time with their families. That's one of the main reasons why we do have a work from home model. Um in, in Manila and in the Philippines in general, uh, it's actually quicker to walk to places than, than to get to, to drive around and get public transport. Uh, the city is absolutely gridlocked. Uh, so eliminating that travel time to and from offices in, in the hubs of Manila uh, allows more efficiencies and more time for, the, for our Philippines team to spend time with their family. Uh, Benj, I'd like to ask you, tell us some of the tasks that you're doing for Peter, Michael, and the Atlas team. Okay. Um, I'm uh, focused on creating marketing codes and proposal for the sales team. Um, I receive all information about the codes and proposal from the agent. So I build the proposal using Real Hub and Engage. And once completed, I send the document to the agent as a draft for approval before sending to the vendor. Um, once I finished my proposal uh, staff, I also doing a data migration task project using an agent box and Rex tool. Awesome. I'm 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 curious, um, Nick. How long? Actually, I should just ask Ray this. How long have you been working with uh, with Michael Coombs and and the Peter Kakos uh, group? Uh, I started March nineteenth. March 19. Yes. I've had a question that's come in and I want to touch it as we're going along. Um, Elisa says to Alex and Benj, but everyone can chime in. Maybe Alex is a good starting point. How long did it take to get onboarded and get used to the systems and processes in your office? So I suppose it's, yeah, what, what, like Alex, I know that you said the experience was a bit different because they do come trained. I can tell they've been trained on agent box. They've been trained on campaign uh, track. They've been trained on uh, engage. How long did it take, Alex? Oh, the onboarding process was really efficient for this experience, which was great. So we probably, I would say, in the first couple of weeks, we had a good understanding of how we would work together. Benj came pretty well educated on everything we needed to sort of share with him. Uh, very different to before, the, the previous remote experience that we had, it took a couple of months of training. We never really got to the point we were satisfied with. So we parted ways with the previous company. I think these guys, because they're real estate focused, there's a lot of training that goes behind the scenes before we get to meet them. There's still probably at least a couple of weeks of them understanding our business, the way we operate our processes. But they're very intelligent people. They obviously know what they're doing. So they pick things up quickly. 
Uh, and the experience in terms of their demeanour, their approach to work, their work ethic, their attitude is really positive for me. It's just a delight to work with them. And that impacts the team's, I guess, morale as well, because if you've got someone in the background that doesn't have the same positive mindset and attitude and it's difficult to reach and the language that they use in their responses is a bit sort of restrictive and combative, which we often see as in support staff, it really brings the team morale down. But nothing's been too difficult for Benj. It's created a lot of efficiency to the point I didn't think he would add as much value from a GCI basis that they've done because ultimately we're trying to grow our business. And now if we take Benj away, there's a big gap, which we didn't sort of know until Benj came in and now has sort of filled that role. And now we think, okay, you know, all of these things that we weren't doing well, if we stop doing that now, we're going to go backwards. So it's an important part of any agent's toolbox, I think. And for us, we've partnered up with the right person. So very grateful for that. Uh, Peter, can I just ask you, uh, firstly, because you haven't said anything yet, and I want to bring you into the conversation because I know that you are using remote professionals in a in a broader way than what, say, Alex is. So firstly, just introduce yourself. You work uh, part of uh, Atlas. Uh, you, you tell us. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, people will be quite surprised that Nick, I see you laughing there about how I haven't said anything yet, so normally I'll... But um, but it's it's no, it's great. It's um, I'm the managing director of the uh, Atlas Lowell North Shore, and uh, so we've been working. Um, so Ken, who who is on the call, is now directly with the Michael Coombs team. Uh, so he's got a slightly different role, and we've got another remote professional. Uh, his name is Ray, who operates through our agent services team. So. His responsibility, so from an agent point of view, they're going to be very much agent focused in terms of quotes and marketing and, um, you know, direct client feedback. Whereas the remote professional that we have for our group is um, works encompassing uh, the whole team, particularly assisting our agent services. So they will, they'll be assigned tasks on a daily basis. Um, they'll be involved in data cleansing um, and communication out to agents, communication via EDMs out to our clients as well. So they've got to be really upskilled in terms of Real Hub, Canva, Agent Box, all our systems and processes um, they're across. So they can they can really chime in wherever they're needed across the whole business. To the question before around um, how long do they take to onboard? Now you know there's very specific tasks for say for Alex's team or for Michael's team. It's quite specific in terms of an agent sort of point of view. Um, it needs to be a little bit more holistic from a company point of view, though, in terms of getting them across all the systems. The most important thing I'll say in terms of induction, Wingman do a wonderful job in getting them to a certain level um, with a certain skill set that they're already coming to the table with. But it's really important that you've got a dedicated team member, especially in that first uh, month or so, that is their go-to person and they're actually talking them through screen sharing. This is how we do things step to step to step to step. I think the most important thing is, is you've got to have someone and some time and ability of someone to be able to do that and not just, you know, let them free reign and, um, and find and navigate their own way through without that support. It's going to blow out by a couple of months. Whereas we can really fast track it to within sort of three to four weeks and they're well and truly up and running because they are incredibly dedicated remote professionals. Um, and, and they've just got such wonderful nature. Uh, that's what we love, what love about them and their work ethics tremendous. And they're just like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? But you've got to spend the time in actually getting them to a point where they can sort of have free reign. Nick, the training, this to me is probably the big differentiator because virtual workers, remote professional, my, you know, VA overseas, this has been a term that's been used for a decade, but it was a weird process. Like you'd get someone, you didn't even know, like, where do we start with these people, right? Um, but your model is that, as Peter says, they come to you with a certain level of competency and understanding of your Australian system. So I'm just going to share a slide right here right now. And that is when they come to us, 
they essentially are able pretty much right from the outset to get oh uh, sorry man uh they come up stop share sorry team you should be able to see uh maybe not it doesn't matter look all i'm trying to get at is that they seem to come along and understand the CRM systems, the uh, price updates, the real tear, engage uh, stuff. They're able to understand about cleaning a database and getting it from being fat to fit. Um, what is the process that you have internally in training and education of these people? So the first thing is we are, we're actually doing at the moment anywhere from three and a half to 4,000 interviews a month uh, in the Philippines to get roughly 100 Philippine staff into our academy. So our academy, we're very, very stringent with that process. Um, our academy, from day one in the academy, we peel it right back. Yes, they might be university educated and, and, and very capable, but we, from day one in the academy, we're talking to them about what is a vendor, what is a buyer, what is an agreement, what's a sales contract, like real basic stuff. And then it develops into how to use Realtor, how to use CoreLogic, how to use all the major CRMs and platforms. Uh, and then once an Australian business selects their remote professional and goes through that process, what we do is we call, we call it a, a specific training. So once they've selected, to the onboarding date, there's usually a two to four week period. And that two to four week period, we really hone in on exactly what that agent or business specifically wants them to do. Now that gets them to a certain level, um, but as Peter touched on, um, we understand as a business, every single agent and every single business have their own flavor, have their own characteristics, have their own way of doing things. Uh, and that's why it's super important uh, when the, the remote professional is onboarded and integrated, um, there is someone, a point of contact on the ground. Um, in Peter's case, I think it's Alice. In, um, in Alex's case, it's Kaya. But there is a go-to uh, onshore here in Australia for the remote professional to, to connect with and actually help them integrate it. Um, at Wingman, we understand that one of the biggest challenges was the integration into the businesses. Uh, we've now also got a team here that can assist with that. So uh, we're an ever-evolving business. Uh, we are aligned with a number of really high-performing agents and we're learning from them. Uh, we understand that um, that this is an evolution of, of what we've developed and what we've developed is phenomenal to date but we want to continue to grow as a business and grow with some of the elite people in the industry. Can I um, ask Alex, uh, in the short term, when you're communicating with your remote professional, do you, what do you seem to use phone? Like, like yeah. So I, I would suggest WhatsApp's the best app to use. Um, look, our, our remote professional bench is an extension of our team and family. So that's the way we review it or review it. We're in a WhatsApp group as a team, and he's in that group. So any communication within the team, Benj can see what's being said. If we, someone needs to speak with Benj, they can address it either direct on WhatsApp to him or in the group. I think that's the best way. Um, it's, it's better than email. Text message isn't really practical, given we've got iPhones and Samsungs and different countries. I think WhatsApp's the best way. And Nick, I reckon the reflection, it's the reflection of the people you're teaming up with, mate, because... I've experienced remote professionals before, as I've said to you, but it's a real delight to have you, Benj, on board, bro. Seriously is, man. Like, it's a refreshing <laughs> experience to, to have someone that is understanding of our business, is willing to help with passion and the positive attitude, and that lifts us as a team. It genuinely does. And now the opportunities that are coming to us from prospecting where the agents can now sit down and just dial numbers and connect with people and build relationships, they were not doing that before because it would take them hours to mine the data and that was clunky and prohibitive and they were like, oh, I don't have time. And 
So it just creates a lot of efficiency. And from a dollar productive point of view, I don't know of a better alternative. Like if you've got to invest in this business, real estate, you can either get away and go on the cheap and try and avoid costs, but really to really grow and, and have market share, you've got to invest. And the efficiency that the remote professional brings versus someone onshore, I think is far superior and the attitude is far better as well. So for, for us, it's been a, a great partnership. We hope it continues. But I have to say that before I got into this, I was skeptical because I'd experienced it before. Nick kept on talking it up. I was like, yeah, man, I've done this before. I don't think it's for me. It was like, just give me a shot. Let me try. And I got a sense of who the people were and, and what these guys are doing in the Philippines. I think it goes beyond work. My interest in them is not just about partnering up from a business point of view, but the support they're giving to these people, I think is important. Our culture, unfortunately, in Australia is they expect a lot. This is just, you know, new sort of the young generation, high expectation for little output. You know, the, the work ethic isn't as strong, but they expect a lot back. Whereas in, it's very different in the Philippines. And these guys, to, to Nick's point, I mean, to get to work and back, some, some of the staff in Philippines are traveling for one and a half, two hours in the morning two hours in the evening, they don't see their families. So to be able to give someone that opportunity and them to support us, I think it's just a really nice win-win scenario. Yeah, very, very, very well said. And again, team, we're taking advantage of um, a global economy that allows you to use currency differences to your advantage and benefit other people along the way. Um, uh, may I ask also the same question to Peter Kakos? Um, the way that you, Pete, the way that you communicate with your remote professionals is what way? Tom, you know, it's, can I just just go back on something? And it's an interesting point that Alex makes because I hear this all the time, and it was my trepidation. I've never experienced sort of VAs before. I'd only experienced the horror stories that people had shared with me over years, and I think what it comes down to it reminds me of I remember putting my first PA on back in the 90s as one of the first ones to ever put a PA on and we didn't know what the hell we were doing and I think that was that's basically what I see is a lot of agents who tried this VA or companies that tried VAs didn't know what the hell they were doing they just sort of um all care no responsibility I'll get someone else to do it so I think what's really helped is yes we've got wingman who have got them to a certain level but I think we've become better as professionals in systemizing our business and not complicating our business the worst thing you can do is is not have a system and expect the wingman to just you know by magic or, or osmosis just to create magic within your business you need first of all you need to start with the right systems and the right processes and the right expect, expectations of what you want them to do. So that leads to that communication piece and whether it's um, it's WhatsApp, we just jump on Teams. We would, um, our girls would jump on, our agent services would jump on Teams three, four, five times a day. If it needs to be 10 times a day, it would be. But there are regular meetings to top and tail every single day. This is what the expectations are at the start of the day. And at the end of the day, what did we achieve today? And at the middle of the day, if required, if they've got any little questions or anything like that, they can certainly chime in via Teams. Um, we don't want sort of every hour, every half hour, we'd certainly more so combine your questions into chunks unless it's super urgent and it's a real roadblock for you taking the next step in what you want to do. But the communication piece is critical um, because communication is the basis of culture. We want them as part of our team. And, and the beautiful thing about um, our remote professionals and the wingmen is, is we're creating a community. We like it to look at it as a community. We want them included in everything that we do within our team. So we want them as part of our, uh, really it's around our culture. That's why they're responsible for so much communication pieces going out to our clients and also communication pieces internally with our agents as well. So our agents get a feel for them um, right across the business as well and what their role is, and they are, you know, creating content pieces for, for everyone to utilise. Okay, I'm just going to share now, see if this uh, works here. And I think you should be able to see now a slide there. And this slide here is showing you a model that I use metaphorically um, using martial arts, but in real estate, becoming a black belt in real estate. And what you'll notice, it's all about team at the top. You know, and the gentlemen that we've got on here, on here, uh, at that level, I know your role's different now, Pete, 
um, um, but for most of the people that are watching this, they're moving up the ranks, uh, up this ladder. Now, to be able to do that, you're going to need to actually, what do they say? Uh, the bigger the, the dream, the bigger the team. And all we're trying to do is create processes in your business that allowing the remote professionals to be doing lower dollar productive activity so the lead agent can be doing the key stuff. Um, and um, I can tell you some simple processes that you should be having with them is your um, morning uh, uh, catch up, like a work in progress meeting, uh, basically WhatsApp group um, that Alex made reference to. Uh, just remind me also again, uh, Nick, um, actually I feel, I feel slack because there's so many messages that are coming in here and I, I, I don't want to feel like we're not paying attention to this wonderful audience that's on Facebook. I think we've got a few hundred, well, we've got at least 158 on Zoom, but we've also got a few hundred eyes watching this on, on Facebook. Um, the question is, um, how concerned, Alexander Loretti writes, how concerned about cybersecurity were you at first and how does Wingman uh, protect is there any, like, Nick, maybe you answer that one. Yeah, so um, we we take, obviously, security is a, is a, a very high priority for us. Uh, we, don't, we don't know everything about security, but we are partnered with a company that specialises in security. Uh, Connected Platforms is their name. Uh, if anyone is considering or concerned about uh, the security, we're happy to put you directly in touch with, that, with our provider. Uh, we do that. Uh, we do that regularly. They can talk to you about the ins and outs of of how. But we are as secure uh, as anyone here in Australia uh, and any of the banks. And we take security very, very seriously. Um, and touch wood, to date, we haven't had any problems. But we will continue to fine tune that uh, and continue to work on upping the security from from that level. I noticed also, Tom, there was a question. Uh, from someone in New Zealand, uh, are we? Um, do we work across uh, New Zealand? Uh, the answer is yes. So we uh, we have a number of offices that we're working with in New Zealand, and we're actually going to New Zealand in June and spending a week there. So Nick, would love Nick, to connect. In case people are at this point of our webinar have got yeah, I want to take this further. I want to find out more. I want to get one. Uh, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, I'll put it in, or Susan can put it in the chat, um, wingmangroup.com.au, or you can contact me on Instagram uh, or email nick at nickgeorges.com.au. Okay, Susan, if you can put the wingman URL there, the the social media one, they probably, it's easier if they just go on and find it, but wingmangroup.com.au. Also, if we can put it into Facebook. Uh, by the way, everyone, I'm letting you know, um, the investment, I think, is around 25 grand a year. Just to give you a bit of context, just a bit of context. Um, if you don't spend the 25, you'll be paying tax on it. Um, that's going to mean that really your net saving uh, would have been 15 grand, right? So just think about for $15,000 a year, right? You have got someone that is with you. 35 hours a week that's grateful, that is bending their back, that's their core job, they think and of you all day. If you don't think that you're not going to get another listing and another sale because of that person there, um, I think, I don't even have to ask you that question. I think you know that question. And I think what it is, is right now, Probably if you've been someone that has been resisting because you kept on thinking it is a significant investment, I can't train them, I, I don't have the money. Uh, Wingman has been a panadol to that headache that people have had. Um, I want to answer this question that Vish has asked, which is what CRM systems are the remote professionals familiar with? Also, what does Tom Panos think might be a great CRM? Listen, I'm biased. I get paid money by Agent Box in my partnership relationship. I'm going to say Agent Box, right? I mean, Alex uses um, Agent Box. I'm not quite sure. Pete, what do you use? 
Agent Box. Okay, well, there you go. So, <laughs> Agent Box is happy right now, Tom. Very Agent happy. Box is happy. They've got one guy that's getting paid talking about them, and they've got two people that pay them talking about them. <laughs> right? So, but 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 Nick, if they're not an Agent Box client, if they're not an Agent Box client, um, who who what other systems? So we're they're trained up on Vault, Rex, um, all, all the major, all the majors. Um, Locked on, um, box and dice, all, all the major CRMs, uh, real tear, uh, plug for real tear there. Um, um, yeah, all the major CRMs and platforms uh, across both sales and property management. Okay, Octal Vale Vali says, and this question is for Alex and Nick. Uh, well, every, anyone can chime in because Peter, you've also had experience with this question. My experience with VAs is they quit after a couple of weeks of working with them. How do you address the issue and ensure they stay connected and continue working? Well, look, Octay, look, my I've had, you know, remote professionals and VAs, they haven't quit. I've had some that have quit. Um, um, yeah, I... I think, Tommy, can I ch chime in there? Yeah. Um, but I think it comes down to the experience of the the person supporting you. You know, what's the relationship that you have with them? Are they happy in their role? Are they being respected, considered and heard? Um, are they a part of your extended team? Are you treating them as a separate person? And it really comes down to the that person's work ethic, their passion to be supportive of your process, the connection, relationship you have. You know, I, I don't think, I don't know, with Wingman, Nick, you can answer to that, but... You know, we don't have that experience. I've, I haven't had it before, but I've heard of others. Um, but I think if you are connecting with the right company and with the right people, the odds of that are very low. These guys are very grateful for the work that they do. They appreciate the opportunity and there's a strong relationship between us. So I, I don't see that as a risk if you partner it with a with the right team. I, I, echo, I echo that. I think um, we are in the business, in the real estate industry of building relationships. Um, and quite often, we uh, we put to the back burner the relationships within our business. We're just worried about the relationships with the buyers and the vendors. Um, I think if you put the emphasis on building a relationship internally in your business, whether that be front desk, whether it be your sales associate, whether it be your number one sales agent or your remote professional, um, I think if you can build a relationship uh, and... Um, make them feel or bring them into the vision and the vision of the business, um, you, will, you won't lose them. Obviously, there's always a human factor. There's things that happen. Um, have we had remote professionals that have left after a couple of weeks? The answer is yes. Um, but I bring it back to the Australian business. Did they put the emphasis on building their relationship with the offshore team? Um, and I can confidently say any Australian business that has integrated and made the professional part of their team um, the retention uh, is like nothing I've seen so uh, we've got over 400 staff now in the Philippines um, and the amount that we are losing is is non-existent uh, because we put such an emphasis on um, on the relationship that we build as a business with the offshore team or with our remote professionals and we also instill that in the businesses that are coming on board with us to actually spend the time, uh, integrate them well and build a relationship with them, get to know them as a human being, not just someone doing some tasks in the background. Len asked the question, how do you manage the tasks of your uh, remote professional? Do you do that through a CRM, Google Sheet or something like monday.com? Uh, anyone, uh, Pete, you're nodding your head. You, What's your... Yeah, we've got monday.com and we also use Trello board as well. Right. Um, let's move on to the next question. Adam Joski, hey, good to see you, Adam. Hi, guys. Thanks for the session. I was wondering if you guys are client-facing at all in terms of speaking with vendors, buyers or database. Nick, generally, like, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I think the answer is no, but I could be wrong. Yeah, generally, it's something that we don't encourage right off, right away. Um, having said that, we have developed, um, there are a number of, uh, I mean, we've got, we've got Benj and Ray here who are, 
speaking to an audience of 150 people. So we've got businesses that have utilised Wingman and our offshore team uh, at front desk, at reception, um, at Housemark, which is our real estate business. Uh, Jeff, who's our front desk manager based in the Philippines, takes 90 calls a day. I think 50 of them get through to the property managers. Uh, their English is amazing, but I, I think... I think as a rule, initially, I would get them integrated into the business, get them to know your systems and processes, get them to know your marketplace before I would get them um, speaking to clients, uh, buyers, vendors. I think that is that is your role uh, as, as a lead agent or as someone running a business to, to hold those relationships. Uh, and I would get the remote professionals doing um, doing the things that are give you that are going to give you more time to build those relationships. Okay. Uh, Russell Barry or Berry, sorry, Russell, uh, has asked how many weeks per year coverage? In other words, would I need to factor holiday weeks for the support person? So yeah, just uh, Nick, how does it work? Uh, 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 annual leave um, and, and hours that they work? Uh, 40 hours a week. Yeah, uh, is is the full time package? Uh, they have 10, 10 sick days and ten annual leave days a year. Okay, uh, so only ten. So in Australia, there's twenty annual days, isn't there? Yeah, so it's total twenty, but ten sick days and ten annual leave days. Okay, while I've got you, can you remind me again for those that uh, have seen uh, the REB story? that was written about the walk you're going to be doing to Eric. Um, so on the Sunday where Eric kicks off, what are you actually doing, Nick? So we are, one of the big initiatives for us is we're partnered with a company called Destiny Rescue. Destiny Rescue are a, a nonprofit organization and a charity that um, rescue children from sex trafficking across the world. Um, Obviously, we have a huge connection in the Philippines, and the Philippines is unfortunately one of the one of the big countries that that is running rampant. Uh, we are doing um, we're raising awareness and raising money. Uh, we're doing it on the Thursday and the Friday before Eric. Uh, we're walking a hundred kilometers, um, and we would love anyone who's coming to Eric to to get involved. We're doing it. We're doing fifty k over uh, both days. Uh, day one will be a core team uh, of, of wingman and a few few uh, businesses that we're aligned with. Uh, and day two, we're inviting the greater real estate industry uh, to walk from Coolangatta back to Main Beach, uh, where we have a bus. We'll have a bus in the Gold Coast. If anyone wants to come and do 20Ks, 10Ks, we would love anyone from the real estate industry to get involved. Um, yeah, the, the website, if you want to get involved or um, just send me an email uh, if you want to come and support. Um, and if you want to donate, just go to destinyrescue.com.au and click on the Wingman, Wingman link. We would, love, we would love the real estate industry to get behind it. ARIC is, a, is an amazing event uh, with a lot of learnings, um, but we understand there are, there are bigger things happening in the world. Uh, and I know we're just a splash in the ocean, uh, but if we can help in a little way, um, I think we're up to uh, just over 20,000 raised, which is going to save, uh, which will save about 14 kids, uh, 14 children. Uh, and we want to continue to do as much as we can uh, to raise awareness for this horrific thing that's happening across the world um, and do our little bit here in Australia. Okay. Tom, you said you wanted to trim up for Eric. You should probably join them. <laughs> Tom, we'd love to have you, but I know he's crazy the week and days before Eric. But uh... <laughs> Susan, Susan, I can say the same thing about you. You said to me you wanted to, you wanted, you wanted to sort of look. Let's great. do it. I'll and see you there. Probably more important for you than me. I'm, I'm sort of in a relationship, but uh, you want to be footloose, duty free. You want to look a million dollars, Susan. Let's do it. Okay, can I just remind everyone, Nick Georges's number is 0421-303-032. Um, his email is nick at nickgeorges.com.au. The website is wingmangroup.com.au. It is 1144. 
Uh, gentlemen, so good to see you. And we have three Greek heritage guys on this, I just realized. We have two Filipinos, three Greek heritage guy. We got Alex Jordan and uh, Susan quietly away. Um, so firstly, gentlemen in the Philippines, thank you for jumping in today. I also know that jumping on to uh, Facebook and having all these people look at you and also on Zoom looking at you can be uh, overwhelming if it's something that you don't uh, regularly do. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Alex Jordan, um, you know, still to this day, I've looked at every TikTok. Uh, I, I, in TikTok, I, I love looking at inspirational video. I like looking at 30, 45 segments of stuff, but nothing has been more powerful than a video I saw about 18 months ago when Alex Jordan went in and uh, showed his parents that he had discharged their mortgage. Um, and uh, man, you whack, you put that on TikTok, that will give people goosebumps. You know, in an in an industry where the next reward is a Maserati or a business class ticket to uh, Las Vegas to watch the UFC, it is so exciting to see uh, what some real estate people do with uh, the fortunes of having a great real estate life and what you do for your family. Incredible video, Alex. And Peter Kakos, three, am I right? Three decades in real estate? Yes, it is. Uh, it is that 30, yeah, 30 years now, Tom. Mm. 30 years in real estate. Are you, as I'm talking to you, are you in Byron Bay right now? Are you in Byron? No, 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 I'm in Sydney. Sydney. We've got a Byron Bay office as well, but I'm... Um, I remember I'm I saw you there last time. You're in Sydney now. But, you know, you've been quite uh, eloquent in the way that you've explained how a remote professional can work. And uh, it does sound like, like the truth is, it sounds like if you're totally disorganised and, you're, and, and, and your place is um, just operating in chaos, I don't want you to think that you're going to get a remote professional and say sort it all out is going to be your answer because you did make a very valid point. You know, our processes that we currently have, and most businesses have improved from the milk bar type operations of uh, a few decades ago. Um, and uh, it's just the matter is time. Like, And what this is going to allow you to do is to have choice management, to pick better choices in what you're doing with your time, because there are other people that are really good and like doing stuff that you probably don't like doing and are not good at. This is the value of this equation, that it is win-win for all parties involved. And uh, I want to thank you all. Enjoy uh, Anzac Day tomorrow. Uh, gentlemen in the Philippines, we have a day here. It's a public holiday tomorrow. In Australia, it is Anzac Day. Um, and that's why uh, there's a lot of people that are happy today in Australia. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Nice to meet you guys. So Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks.